Hi everyone, my name is Mr. Barlow and welcome to episode 4 of the VCE Biology Podcast. In this episode, I'll mainly be talking about cell membranes and the way that molecules move across cell membranes. So when we think about the inside of a cell and we think about the cytosol of a cell, we realize that all cells have got fluid inside them. And the fluid inside a cell is called the intracellular fluid. But cells have often got fluid outside of them too. And uh, so if, if cells are surrounded by a fluid, that's called the extracellular fluid. So if you're from the kingdom Monera, so you're just a single celled organism, a bacteria, your extracellular fluid is wherever you are. So if you're a bacteria, you're living in the toilet, your extracellular fluid is toilet water. But if you're a cell from a multicellular organism, for example, a human, your extracellular fluid is whatever the human's internal environment is. Either way, cells do need to exchange materials with their internal environment, and they do this via the plasma membrane. So the plasma membrane is what's called a phospholipid bilayer. So that means it's basically two layers of phospholipids or two layers of fats. So phospholipids have two ends. They have a hydrophilic or water-loving end or water-loving head and they've got a hydrophobic or water-hating end and that's the tail. So the hydrophilic end or water-loving end goes on the both of the outsides of the cell membrane and the hydrophobic ends of the phospholipid molecules are squished together in the middle of the um, plasma membrane and so that is how it basically forms a bilayer. So the basic structure of the plasma membrane is a phospholipid bilayer, but plasma membranes also got um, proteins embedded in it, and they provide channels for the movement of certain molecules through the membrane. Uh, they've also got cholesterol uh, embedded in them, that's kind of for structural stability, uh, and they've also got carbohydrate chains which um, protrude from the cell membrane, uh, and they're used in cell recognition. Uh, so that's, you know, the structure of the cell membrane. So one of the functions of the plasma membrane is to enable the cell to exchange material with its environment. And this also helps to explain why cells are so very, very small. So cells are small because, basically, smaller things have a higher surface area to volume ratio. So a higher surface area to volume ratio means that there's more surface in contact with the environment and therefore the cell is able to exchange more materials more quickly. So basically small things have a very high surface area to volume ratio and big things have a very low surface area to volume ratio. So that's great for bacteria and single celled organisms because they're very small so they've got a high surface area to volume ratio so they can exchange material with their environment. But what about really big multicellular organisms? Well these organisms have often adapted a larger surface area organ to help them exchange material with their environment. So for example, humans, we've got lungs and lungs have got an enormous surface area to volume ratio. If you spread our lungs out, they cover, you know, two tennis courts worth of stuff. Um, plants have uh, evolved to have these structures called leaves. And leaves, again, have a really high surface area to volume ratio. And that, again, enables them to exchange materials with their environment. So it's important that uh, organisms can exchange materials with their environment. And to do it, they generally need to have a high surface area to volume ratio. Now, quite a number of different molecules go in or out of cells via the plasma membrane, and they all do it by different methods. So there's lipid-soluble substances, and they can easily dissolve through the membrane. So remember that membranes are made of phospholipids or fats, and so that's why lipid-soluble substances can just quickly or easily diffuse through it. There's also small molecules like water, um, and they can easily pass through. There's small uncharged molecules like water or carbon dioxide, and they can just pass through the um, membrane. But there's also larger water-soluble substances like sugar, well, glucose, and uh, amino acids, and they basically need to pass through protein channels or protein gates, which reside in the plasma membrane. So there's several ways that things can pass through the plasma membrane. The first one is diffusion. 
So for example, if I had a really salty solution on one side of a, a partially permeable membrane and a less salty solution on the other side of the membrane, what would happen is the salt from the high concentration area would diffuse through the membrane to the low concentration area until the concentrations were pretty much equal on either side of the membrane. So we would say that the salt particles have diffused across the membrane. Now, diffusion can happen faster in a process called facilitated diffusion. So what happens with facilitated diffusion is that there are these protein channels embedded in the membrane and those protein channels assist um, the dissolved materials to diffuse across uh, the plasma membrane. So they basically make diffusion happen significantly faster. So it, it's still called facilitated diffusion because the particles still diffuse from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So in fact they go down the concentration gradient. Um, but it's facilitated because the particles travel through these protein channels. So another way that something moves across the cell, or in this case water, is osmosis. So osmosis is kind of the same as diffusion. But instead of the things that are dissolved in the water moving across the membrane, the water moves across the membrane. So let's say, for example, we had a solution on one side of a membrane which had a really high concentration of glucose molecules, and a solution on the other side of the membrane which had a really low concentration of glucose molecules. Um, but the membrane was only partially permeable, so the glucose mo molecules couldn't actually cross the membrane. What would happen is, the water would go from the, the low concentration area to the high concentration area to make the concentration of dissolved substances equal out. So osmosis is the movement of water across the plasma membrane, and yeah, it moves from a low concentration solute solution to the high, higher concentration solute solution. So in fact, they move along the osmotic gradient, and they do so via osmotic pressure. And that's osmosis. Now another way that particles move across plasma membranes is via a process called active transport. And this is a bit like facilitated diffusion in that the molecule, molecules move through protein channels. The difference is that active transport requires energy to be expended. So this happens when substances are acquired really quickly or you need to move substances against the concentration gradient. So um, again, active transport requires energy, so what that means is that it requires ATP for it to proceed. So active transport, it goes through, plus, through protein channels and uses up ATP. So the last way that substances can move across the plasma membrane is via processes called endocytosis or exocytosis. So this is basically when little bubbles or transport vesicles fuse with the plasma membrane so that the cell can consume things, and that's a process called endocytosis, so things moving into the cell, or the cell excretes substances, and that's a process called exocytosis. So these transport vesicles form, and the material inside the transport vesicle either comes into the cell, endocytosis, or leaves the cell, exocytosis. Now in fact there are actually two types of endocytosis. So basically uh, when a cell brings liquid into it uh, via endocytosis it's called pinocytosis and when a solid material enters the cell it's called phagocytosis. So they're the two different types of endocytosis. And that brings episode four of the VCE Biology Podcast to a close. I'm Mr. Barlow, and thanks very much for listening. Mm -hmm.